So have you guys ever been watching a boxing match and you see a guy going out there and he's just getting the brakes beat plumb off of him and you're sitting there watching it. He ain't keeping his guard up. He's not moving his head. Just gets a crap beat out of him all around. And then he goes back to the corner of the camera, zooms in, and you can hear the trainer saying, keep your guard up, move your head, watch for the jab. And the fighter's sitting there, you know, like this. And then the match starts back again. They're back in the next round. And the fighter attempts to move his head, but then moves his head straight into the punch, attempts to watch the jab, but then walks right into it. It just makes things worse. And then at the end of the fight, they're standing there, the trainer looks disgusted, and the fighter looks confused, like he don't know what just happened. That's exactly what it feels like watching J.D. Vance on the campaign trail. It feels like you're just watching a guy who is getting the crap beat out of him, and every time he tries to make it better, he just walks right into it and makes it worse. It's so cringe. It is absolutely, he's one of the most, I thought Ron DeSantis was cringeworthy. I'm beginning to think J.D. Vance has him topped in the cringe department. And he made a comment a while back about the childless cat ladies, and that went viral. And that pissed a whole lot of people off. So is he going to watch for the jab? Is he going to move his head? Is he going to do anything to do better this round? No, he just walks right into it again. Take a look. You're calling it a sarcastic comment. Sure. And yet some women, and you got the feedback in real time, felt like it was a gut punch to them personally. Do you regret making that comment? Look, I regret certainly that a lot of people took it the wrong way, and I certainly regret that the DNC and, and Kamala Harris lied about but it. But do you but regret look, what you said, Senator? Look, Kristen, I'm going to say things from time to time that people disagree with. I'm a real person. I'm going to make jokes. I'm going to say things sarcastically, and I think that what's important is that we focus on the policy. There are certainly going to be things that I say. If I'm elected vice president, people are going to say, well, I wish he had said that differently. I think it's most important to actually be the person I actually am and to say those sarcastic comments were made in the service of a real substantive point. This country has become too anti-family. It's too expensive to afford a house. It's too expensive yeah. to afford groceries. Donald Trump and I want to change that. And unless we get better leadership, we're not going to. But, but again, just very quickly, given that people have told you directly, have spoken out, have said that they were offended, they were hurt by those comments, do you wish you never made those childless cat lady comments? I think that it's much more important for me to just be a normal human being who sometimes says so things no that people disagree with. I have a lot of regrets, Kristen, but making a joke three years ago is not at the top 10 of the list. So yeah, he just got up off his stool and walked right back into that jab. He didn't do anything to change up the game whatsoever. In other words, I don't regret saying it. I just made a sarcastic comment trying to make a point. So try to listen to the point I was making, okay? Which was that people that don't have children are bad. That's pretty much what he's saying. And he thinks that somehow he's redeeming himself when actually he's just digging himself deeper into the hole and just sabotaging himself even worse as he goes forward. And he just keeps having to remind everybody, I'm a real person, you know, I'm a real person. I'm gonna say things. I'm a real, it's like, it's like he's having to convince himself that he's a real person. And it's like he's having to convince the audience that he's real and that he means what he says. And I think the reason he keeps going back to that talking point is because I don't think J.D. Vance really knows who he is. I really don't. I think he's a dude that's still trying to find himself and find his voice and he ain't quite there yet. And he definitely just continues to step in it when they start talking about the election results. And they ask him, hey, you know, Donald Trump is trying to say that the election is going to be stolen. And he's like, no, that's not what Donald Trump is doing. Again, he just keeps walking into it. Take a look. Something that Donald Trump sure. said in North Carolina and uh, yet again Friday night. Our primary focus is not to get out the vote. It's to make sure they don't cheat because we have all the votes you need. You can see it. Why is Donald Trump casting doubt on the election before it's even happened? I don't think that's what Donald Trump is doing. Well, that's so what I, he's I, doing. I, that's what he says here. We I need to make sure they don't cheat. I think that what he's saying is that we want to pursue a set of policies in the Republican Party that make it easier for every legal ballot to be cast and counted, but make it harder for illegally cast ballots to be counted. Now, we can disagree about how many of those there are, whether there are a few hundred, a few thousand, maybe more, but, but just in the last week, okay? so. Just in the last week, once in Arizona and once in Pennsylvania, there were major court wins that make our ballot process more secure and more effective. I think that's what Donald Trump is talking about, is we have to pursue, sometimes through litigation, sometimes through better policy at the state or national level, a set of rules that make sure every ballot is legally counted. Well, it's very different from your message, which is, we, you said, and I'll quote you back to yourself, we have to work as hard as possible to persuade Americans to vote for us. 
Council. Are you on the same page as Donald Trump? Because, again, <laughs> he seems to be casting doubt of course, on the results of, of the election before it's even happened. Of course we're on the same page, Kristen. We talk all the time, and I guarantee you, if you sat here and said, Mr. President, D Donald Trump, do you believe that we need to do, that your campaign needs to persuade voters as much as possible? Of course he's going to say yes. Okay, J.D., let's be a real person here and admit there's no way Donald Trump would sit there in that chair and say that. You're fooling yourself if you think he would. Ever since 2016, he's been saying that elections were rigged. He said the only way he could lose in 2016 would be if it was rigged. Then when he won, of course, it was the greatest election ever, the most fair election ever. And he brought that act back in 2020. And when he lost, he kept spreading every conspiracy theory going forward. And we're right here in the same mess today in 2024. He's still saying the same old tired talking points. But JD says that he does believe it's going to be a free and fair election. And I can't imagine if he and Donald Trump talks every day, I can't imagine Trump saying the same thing, but take a look. You have faith that the 2024 election will be free and fair? I do, Kristen. I do think it's going to be free and fair, and we're going to do everything that we can to make sure that happens. We're going to pursue every pathway to make sure, again, legal ballots get counted. Um, but I, I feel very good about where we are. I think we're going to win this race, and I think we're going to win it in a very good election. Well, all I can say is let's see if he says that when they lose in November. I have a feeling he will change his tune drastically then. But this guy is the most awkward person that I've ever seen, and I've never seen anyone just keep walking into those jabs. I had to share this clip with you because, folks, this is too funny to pass up. Take a look. Giving Kamala Harris control over inflation policy, Shannon, it's like giving Jeffrey Epstein control over human trafficking policy. The American people are much smarter than that. They don't buy the idea that Kamala Harris represents a fresh start. She is more of the same. It is doubling down on the failed policies of the Harris administration to give Kamala Harris a promotion rather than to fire her, which is what I think most Americans are going to do on November. Well, how does that not? Yeah, I really don't think I would mention Epstein's name, dude. I just think I would keep that one out of your mouth because people can always bring their receipts and talk about Trump being on his plane. They can show all the clips and all the quotes that he has been one of Epstein's biggest buddies for the longest time. So yeah, definitely don't bring up Epstein. That's not the smartest move. And don't ever visit a donut shop again, okay? <laughs> really, <laughs> I saw this, and this one hit home to me, and I'm going to tell you why after we watch it. But get ready to laugh. Down. Thank you for letting us come in here. Yes, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry, man. Okay. Okay. Yeah. She, 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 she doesn't want to be on film, guys. So just cut her out of anything. Appreciate that, man. Um, I'll give you the answer. I'm running for vice president. Let's see it. Okay. Um, I'll work it. I'm in here since uh, the beginning of July. Okay. For this year. Okay, good. How about you, sir? Uh, uh, almost two years. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Almost everything. Yeah, it'll be a lot of glazed here, some sprinkle stuff, some of these cinnamon rolls, just whatever makes sense. How long has this place been around? About four years. About four years? Okay. How long have you been here? Uh, a little over six months. Okay, good. Now, the main reason that I shared that clip, believe it or not, is I used to work in a donut shop myself. I used to make donuts, and I really enjoyed it. I'm not even that big of a donut person, honestly. It's not something I eat, uh, but I did enjoy making them, and I got pretty good at it. I can't imagine what I would have done if I'd have looked up and seen J.D. Vance and his crew coming through my front door. I kind of put myself in those people's place and went, oh, man. But it's so hilarious to me that he has to say, I'm J.D. Vance, and uh, I'm running for vice president. <laughs> it's like... <laughs> That was pretty funny. And the only question he can think of in his mind is, so, how long you been here? Uh, okay. Uh, how about you? How long you been here? Okay. Well, yeah. Uh, how long has this place been here? Yeah. Uh, cool. Well, just uh, give me some of those glaze and just, you know, some of those little doohickeys, whatever the hell that is. It's just like, he's just so, he's so painfully cringe. No matter where he goes, no matter what he says, he's so painfully cringe. Ron DeSantis, if you ever stumble across this video, buddy, just relax because uh, J.D. Vance has taken the crown of cringe from you. And uh, don't ever try it again, by the way, but J.D. Vance has taken the crown of cringe away from you. You don't have to worry about that anymore. Him and RFK Jr. is just competing for it every day. <laughs> just a weird bunch of people, man, truly are. And every time you think, well, is he gonna do better this round? Is he gonna turn this fight around? Is he gonna, is he gonna do anything to bring it back home? Nope. He's just going to keep walking into that jab. He's just going to keep walking in with his guard down. He's not going to move his head. Did you ever notice in the Rocky movies, Rocky never moved out of the way? <laughs> I mean, I don't know how he won anything. The guy never moved. Just stood there. <clears throat> I love Rocky. I love the Rocky movies. And I know they did it for theatrics. But these theatrics in the political world that 
that J.D. Vance is, is going through, you got to admit, they're pretty damn funny.